It's coming down again now a bit. See the timing here. The last time it was like a torrential downpour when I was coming over here. Uh, what, a week and a half ago? And uh, they still had people coming over to do the thing. So, let's see. Probably tonight they'll have some people, send some people over here. Linger with their phones. Yeah. See, right away, right away. That's pouring. Okay, here it comes. Got here just in time. So I left my portable tracking device uh, tonight. Really, the only reason that you need it is because of the time. Check the time. I mean, unless you're expecting call or whatever. I often have it if I'm going to order Uber Eats, but aside from that, don't need it everywhere. So, got the gla got two pairs of glasses charged. So. So don't need the phone to record, realistically. I mean, it's good to have it at times for to record, just in case, but the glasses are well charged, so leave the portable tracking device at home for tonight. Yeah, so that's interesting. Like, I mean, you get people who, who you talk to about this. You'll get people who you talk to who will bring up things like, um, you know, saying that um, some of these methods were developed so that they could stop criminals before they commit crimes. And first of all, the methods were developed in uh, communist countries to be used against dissidents. That's first and foremost. That's the main primary reason they were developed. Have they done it uh, from time to time, it used it for doing the, the other thing that was described? Yeah, probably. But the whole problem is when you say that, when you say to stop someone from committing a crime, you're, you're, you're clearly indicating that they have not committed a crime. So, so if someone hasn't committed a crime, you, it, realistically, I could arbitrarily say about anyone, I could say anyone, I think that person has the potential to commit a crime. That person got angry and screamed, um, you know, when a car cut them off. So they have the potential to commit a crime because they were screaming. Th that logic is ridiculous. Because you could literally, you could say that about any cop, any cop who, in his personal life, when he's off duty, gets pissed off, screams at someone. Um, do I then have the power to say I think that person could get violent and commit a crime, and then put them on a watch list and attempt to ruin their life, and turn everyone around them against them, and stalk them and follow them everywhere I go? No, that would be that would be horrendous. That would be wrong, and no decent and moral person would do that, right? So there's. Everything is wrong with that logic where you could say, well, we think someone could commit a crime because all it takes is someone corrupt to just say, to just make the judgment. You're putting that judgment in the hands of people who are grossly corrupt. So they can just make that up about anyone. They can make that up about someone who they think is a political dissident, who, who disagrees with someone politically or who is an activist. Say, we think this person has the potential to get violent, commit a crime. You could say that about any human, any human being. Right? You could say, I could say that about somebody just because I dislike them. Would it be right for me to then put them on a list to uh, attack every aspect of their life, to have them stalked by police, fire department, um, public servants everywhere they go, to have them mobbed at their workplace, uh, followed and stalked by neighbors, um, have people, you know, subjecting them to noise harassment all the time? That would be disgraceful that would be the actions of a sick sociopath who would, who would do that right so it can be established first and foremost that within these organizations uh, in the higher ranks especially there are grossly corrupt people in positions of authority so if that can be established and then those people are given this ability to just arbitrarily say any person that person could commit a crime then they could just put anyone they don't like or anyone who uh, makes a post online that, that's against whatever you say? You put a post up against the COVID measures. They could just say, "Well, he, you know, this is this is reason to think that this person could become violent." If you're against the COVID measures, they could say, "We believe this person could become violent. We're going to put him on a watch list, and he's going to be targeted for the rest of his life." Uh, and we're looking for three potential outcomes: either that the person is harassed so much that they commit suicide. 
uh, or that we render a false mental health diagnosis when they come forward to report these activities and then uh, put them in some mental institution, despite the fact that the person is completely um, sane. Or the final, uh, third and final one, is that they are harassed to the point that we intentionally try to get them to do something wrong, to, to lash out at one of the stalkers. Then they come in and arrest the person, right? Um, so those are the potential outcomes that they wish to achieve with this. Now, somebody who could say, who's going to say that, who's going to say, well, yeah, these programs are used by the cops to, to try and um, stop potential criminals from potentially committing a crime. They haven't committed the crime. They haven't committed the crime, um, and you can arbitrarily say that about anyone. So it's ridiculous. To, if they've committed a crime, you, you have the evidence, you arrest them, they go to trial. Um, that is the democratic process. You, you do not put somebody who has done nothing wrong on a watch list, regardless of what you think they might do, because that's subject, that is subjective, and you're putting um, the ability to choose you know, basically to, to decide to attack someone's every aspect of their life in the hands of grossly corrupt people. Those are the people who are really um, causing the problems. Those people who, who are putting people on watch lists right now. And they are the terrorists, okay? Um, so people saying things like this, uh, maybe some of them are naive who would say that, but others know what they're saying. And that's something, that is something that a cop would say. That's something that a cop would say to, to cover their disgusting actions. The fact of the matter is that they all know that the people who they're targeting have not committed a crime. Don't tell me that some of them don't know about it. They all know about it. You'd have to be, you'd have to be very, very slow not to, okay? So it is well known within those organizations, and they're going ahead and doing it. So, so that is not done in a democracy. That is not democracy when you can't just arbitrarily say someone might do something. I could say that about any any person. I could say, whatever, I find this person irritates me, so I think they might commit a crime. Oh, look at that lightning. Well, that was... <laughs> yeah. I could say they might commit a crime, and so therefore, because I have this position of authority, I can just ruin their life when they've done nothing wrong, and it's just out of childish personal spite. Or something similar, or or because they said something that may be truthful about some corruption going on, uh, you can then lie about them, slander them, say you think they might commit some type of crime. So that is everything is wrong with with making that excuse for the people involved in this. That is what it is. It's an excuse for the people who are involved in this. They are involved in criminal activity, pure and simple. And. Um, now, I, I agree that a lot of the people, the people who are used as the, the, you know, the pawns, they don't know about it, and some of them think they're doing something good. So I'm not talking about all of them. I'm talking about the people in these organizations, the police, the fire department, um, public service industries. Uh, they know what they're doing there. And uh, so someone who would say something like that seems to be making excuses for those people. And... If you look at this with any degree of scrutiny, you can see that they know very well what they're doing, and um, that's another thing that they'll use. So you got to look at stuff like that and look at what people are saying. But again, someone could be naive and they want to see the best in people, right? They want to think that you know, well, maybe they are really doing it because they want to protect and serve. No, no, no. Those people aren't. Um, the people being tricked into it, in some cases, are. In some cases, are the neighborhood watch people. In some cases, they are, right? And also with them, what comes into it is a groupthink mentality. They think that, okay, I don't want to go against, you know, I don't want to say, well, maybe this person didn't do anything because then all the neighbors will turn against me too, right? So they don't want to be seen as outcasts, so, so they go along with it, right? That's, that's the uh, groupthink mentality, and that's how they're brought into it. So, um, yeah, but again, I've had people say that to me before, uh, and it's just, there, there's a, it, that is not a good argument, and the reasoning behind that is... Uh, very uh, flimsy and insufficient. So. But again, so, you know, some people who say that might have good intentions. They want to see the best in people, and that's, you know, that's good, but you've also got to be realistic. And I think you need to look at the fact that there's ample evidence that those other people know what they're doing. And they know that these people have done nothing wrong, and uh, sometimes it includes targeting entire families, okay? Women and children included. And they know about it, and they're doing it. So, to me, uh, that argument doesn't hold any weight at all. Um, you cannot, under any circumstances in a democracy, say, I think someone might do some something, which they haven't done at all. 
um, and just use personal bias to, to use your position of authority to put them on a list to essentially try to ruin their life. That is disgraceful, that is evil, and it is extraordinarily immoral. So, that's all. See that that right as I arrived there comes out. See that? Obvious. Put that on footage there. Literally the moment I got there comes outside. So. You got the text message that guy there. Probably gonna see some activity this week. Most likely. Uh, tonight probably I think I what I think is gonna happen is okay, so we'll wait we'll wait here till we get a clear path Because this is gonna be this is always lined up when I come to the end here where they have like a flood of uh, traffic come through So we'll just wait here So it clears so I can go so you can see how many cars right now. Right. He's gonna turn here Okay, are we gonna get a clear path? Let's see now. Yeah, okay yeah, that whole thing is done there with, with sending the people out to do that so that the target will say something to them or whatever. I don't say anything, you just capture the footage. And if they continue to use them, it just looks ridiculous on them. So, like that house that they used like over and over again last year, um, eventually they stopped using them after like eight months because it was so absurd. And you could see how obvious it was. So now they're kind of using them here and there again, but they're not using them quite as as often as they had been. But, uh, let's uh, see here as we come up here. It looks cloudy, might get some rain. It's ironic, too, the one house had. Oh, actually, sorry, there was one. I'm gonna see there. This thing. Yeah, it looks like there's gonna be rain. Very cloudy. So we're going to see bikers, motorcycle guys, and then we're going to see uh, some activity this week, I'm pretty sure. Some significant activity. I I'm predicting too that fat guy who was in the video who I put in the thumbnail, they're going to send him back. That's my prediction. Also, with regarding that, uh, regarding that activity, they're doing that a lot now, sending these bikers to... to go to, follow me to and from work, and um, I've noticed a couple things. Now I pointed this out, I didn't put this in a video before, but I had noticed it and discussed it but didn't put it up, but uh, there's one guy there who, again, who they use, he seems to be a shot caller with them, because they have him get on, and he'll make, uh, a number of times, they had him make like these hand gestures to other people on the bus, and the one guy is really big buff looking guy with tattoos all over him, Look, clearly a biker. Uh, they had him sit directly across from me, so you can see this guy pulling in here, is he going to stop? He's just stopping. You can see the plaza is completely empty there too where he's pulling in and he's just going to sit there. So back to what I was saying, so so I now know, I'm, I'm certain, that the one guy who they have, um, so the heavy set, the big fat guy who they sent uh, to stalk me on the weekend, which was obvious, you could see that he did because he got off right where I was, stopped, picked up a phone, and he looked over. Now, it, I didn't pick up on this quite as closely the uh, initially, but he looked over at that guy who they're using as, who is basically a, uh, well, he's a shot caller, that guy, in some capacity. Because he, as he called him, he, he, he looked over directly towards that direction the whole time, and the guy was went on the phone, too, the other guy, and looked over at him. 
So then as he crossed, the other guy was on the opposite side of the street at that stop. So that was all to let me know so that I would see it, right? Um, so we're gonna, it's, it's interesting because they have that guy a lot. I see him not, not every day, but a lot of times on the bus as I'm going home. And sometimes, uh, I, I, I don't see him quite as often when I'm leaving, but when I'm going home, he gets on. But he doesn't, he's, he was at a different stop that time. So obviously they sent him a text message saying I would be arriving there. The enormous fat guy gets off and, uh, uh, you could see he was communicate. He was looking over at that guy while going on the phone, and the guy was on the phone, kind of looking at him too. So then, when he came over, they they sat uh, right next to that guy. They both got on the same bus, going back towards Ottawa. Um, they uh, excuse me. They, they, they didn't interact, and they was told not to interact with that guy because then you would you know be more obvious. They know I'm recording, right? But you could see he was communicating with him, and that guy previously, on numerous previous occasions, would be on the bus making little gestures towards these other bikers who they had, who were clearly, um, uh, they had sent to, to kind of stalk me on my way home from work. The one guy would just leer over me the whole time intentionally. Uh, when there was wide seats open all over the bus, he'd come right up in front of me and kind of leer over me. And that was the really, uh, the big guy. And then, uh, and he had all these tattoos, all biker tattoos as well. So. Uh, they had him there, and then as he, right as he got off, the moment he got off, that guy, the bald guy, who I mentioned, who was across the street yesterday, he gestured to another guy who looked to be a biker type of guy. That guy then came right up to the seat where he had been sitting, and sat in the seat right across from me, so. One headlight vehicle here, allowed by the police, and another one headlight vehicle there, you can see that one there too. Well, that one that, that's damaged actually the side of it is damaged yeah so um what's i gonna say so that guy definitely he's a shot caller i don't know whether he's a shot caller in regards to some head of some shot caller within the biker gang or whether he's just somebody who's part of the operation maybe a military guy i don't know for sure it's hard to tell because he doesn't look convent like one of those conventionally like 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 somebody who's a biker but you don't always know you can't always tell um, so he could be, or he could be someone else who's just giving them, you know, the instructions. He could be some type of, uh, it could even be an undercover RCMP, who knows? Uh, it's hard to say, but he's definitely giving them calling shots with those people. And I think they want me to see that too, right? So, uh, hopefully they'll give me more of that, because I will put it up if they give me more of that. And I'm going to put that guy up if I see him in any way doing those things, like communicating with some one of those people. Because I know he's a part of it. They're, they're going to have him continually get on as I'm going home. I know that. But I can't say anything just that he's getting on, right? You, you can just say, okay, well, he's coming home from work. But he's he's showing up in different areas. Like uh, So on Saturday, he was over on the opposite side at a different time uh, when I arrived there. So... So it'll be interesting to see how that progresses.
uh, good footage here. This is what I predicted right here. I told you right now, right now, right now. Excuse me. Hey, hey. Excuse me. Excuse me. Hi. How are you? Uh, yeah, I have to ask you really quickly. Can I just get your badge number, please? Really quickly. Thank you. Thanks, man. Take care. Yeah, got that. Yeah, you see when he, he showed up the moment I left there. He's not on his way to a call. Now you can hear sirens going off here, right? 2368. Okay, we got that. That was good. At least he stopped. Now they're driving around and around, uh, turning on sirens here. You can hear this, right? I think that was done. Uh, well, they had that lined up anyway. If you're getting uh, good footage here, this is what I predicted right here. I told you. Right now. Right now. Right now. Excuse me. Hey, hey. Excuse me. Excuse me. Hi. How are you? Uh, yeah, I have to ask you really quickly. Can I just get your badge number, please? Really quickly. Thank you. Thanks, man. Take care. Yeah, got that. Yeah, you see when he showed up the moment I left there. He's not on his way to a call. Now you can hear sirens going off here, right? 2368. Okay, we got that. That was good. At least he stopped. Now they're driving around and around, uh, turning on sirens here. You can hear this, right? I think that was done... Uh, well, they had that lined up anyway. So you can see the timing there. That was right as I came from the station. Uh, that's the exact same thing the other guy says, too. They're always on their way to a call. They're on their way to a call the precise moment I leave. Every single time? Yeah, okay. Good footage of a face there on the creep stalker biker there.